Well, this is my first time winterizing my uh, Kawasaki STX 15F jet ski. Uh, it's a 2004. The previous owner had it cared for by the dealership, which uh, I'd love to do, but I'm too cheap to do that. Um, so I decided to go ahead and do all this on my own. I do have the service manual, so I kind of went by it. Uh, cooling system, we'll see what I do with that a little bit later. Uh, build system, uh, removing, let's see if I can get down in here, those two, ensuring those lines are clean and clear. Um, fuel system, let's see. Basically, to start off, you just need to take everything off. Take the seat off, take the back uh, storage out, take the front storage compartment out. All right, um, if you go by the book, um, it's going to tell you to do things in kind of a screwed up order, so I'm just going to tell you my order. Uh, first thing I did is went ahead and checked all my hoses, all my hose clamps. I actually did find a couple of loose down there on the exhaust. Uh, they weren't super loose, but they definitely needed tightening. Then um, I did go ahead and remove the uh, in air intake here, and you have to remove this as well. Take a bunch of hoses off. There's a spark arrestor in there. Honestly, unless you've had some issues with, uh, it's not mine was spotless. I don't think anybody had ever taken it out. Um, there's nothing else in this box but the spark arrestor. Do check your little. Um, uh, flood, um, I can't think of the name of them, there, there's three little things, little rubber things here that uh, if you happen to get water inside of it, it'll let you know so you can see it. Just make sure they're on there good. Um, again, check all your hoses, check your fuel hoses here, here, any hose you see with a hose clamp, check it. Um, I also went ahead and you pull the center compartment, uh, right in there, that is your fuel pump. Um, I removed it. Uh, there's two hoses. Those are your your fuel lines, and then there's this is an air line, and this is a check valve. Um, in the manual, it also says check that. Uh, I just blew through it and made sure it would only I could you know blow through it, but I could not suck back through it. Uh, replace the little uh, zip tie on it. That's why it's a different color than the one over here. Um, anyway, if you want to take the fuel pump out, these two hoses come off this wire disconnects then loosen the bottom clamp on the tank don't don't do the top one loosen the bottom clamp on the tank this whole thing comes straight out next year I will not do that it is a complete waste of time the uh, the fuel filter on is just a bag on the end of the fuel pump and I mean mine look brand new and I guarantee you it has not been out in 10 years and it still looked brand new and maybe if I have this thing five years from now maybe I'll pull it out take a look or if I have a problem with a fuel pump but anyway, I wouldn't waste my time. Um, the thing that I did next was to go ahead and completely drain the uh, the fuel tank. This here. Uh, I went ahead and drained it right, you know, right through the fill. Uh, just put a hose in there and uh, tilt the whole thing forwards and get a good siphon going and uh, completely empty it. Uh, once I got it emptied, I went ahead and got some fresh gas, put my uh, stabilizer in it put a couple gallons in it and um, that's so you can move on to the next things you need to do um, and you will actually be getting the stabilizer through your fuel system so uh, once you have that done you basically move on to um, uh, the oil change which I'll be covering next and refilling it and then I'm going to move on to the cooling system and show you what I do there. And we're going to end up um, fogging the engine, spraying everything down, and uh, be pretty much done with it for the season. And this is my makeshift way to change the, or get the oil out of my uh, jet ski. You see I've already got a plastic tube. This was a piece of a siphon, uh, cheap uh, gas siphon that I had. And, um, I've hooked it up to a piece of medical equipment that I actually found on the side of the road. Now, you can get a, um actual siphon from somewhere, uh, or a suction pump to, uh, to get your oil out, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a try, and 
and uh, let's actually get a foot pedal to operate it. I got a gallon jug. So let's see. And here comes the oil. Let's see if it's gonna make it through the pump okay. And it's coming up, oh, there it goes. <laughs> Well, I warmed it up before I started doing this, and I kind of killed two birds with one stone with that. I went ahead and uh, put my fuel stabilizer in. Uh, I'd, I'd already siphoned everything out of the gas tank. Uh, taking the uh, fuel filter, fuel pump, fuel filter out, checked it out, cleaned it, put it back, put in a couple gallons of gas with stabilizer, started it. I've run it to heat it up, and. Uh, Looks like it's just going to take me a little while to pump the oil out, but uh, my little pump here is working. Alright, I got all the uh, oil pumped out. got a little over a gallon out, so I'm pretty confident I got most of it. So now we need to change the uh, oil filter, which is right under here, and it's going to be next to impossible to see somewhere. I'm going to take you through the front opening here and let's see here. Yeah, I think you can see it down there. I'm not able to tell where I'm shooting, but I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking you can see it in there. And I went ahead. I didn't have the right tool. I went ahead and used one of these little strap tools to get it loose. So now I'm just going to have to reach through this. It's easier to get it through the top hole uh, on the uh, on the port side, standing on that port side of it, reaching back to get it. So let me see. If, oh, and make sure to stuff a rag down there under it before you start. Okay, got the filter out. Now this one is an actual Kawasaki filter. I am opting to go with a K and N. Um, filter. I think they're pretty good filters. And one of the big advantages I like is they put this little hex head up here on the top so you can use a wrench to get it off, a regular wrench. Makes it much easier. Um, looks a lot like the, uh, the actual Kawasaki. But um, it's a, uh, well this, like I said, is a 2004 STX uh, 15F, and if you want to go with the KNN, it will be the KN204. After doing a whole lot of looking around, I finally decided to go with the Lucas uh, 10W40 semi synthetic uh, high performance motorcycle motor oil. Um, it's not the cheapest, it's also not the most expensive. You could go full synthetic, that's going to run you close to 10 bucks a quart. Uh, this was about seven and some change a quart. So um, I think it's probably pretty good stuff from what I read, and uh, that's what I chose to go with. So let me fill her back up. Okay, so I filled it uh, back up with oil. Um, I even uh, went ahead and put a little level on here just to level everything out, and then you need to, well, sorry, I let it run and warm up again after I filled it with oil. And uh, now I'm just letting it sit a couple minutes, level the engine, recheck the uh, oil level, make sure it's right. Uh, if it's uh, still a little, little low, of course, add a little bit, and that's pretty much it for an oil change. All right, I think my biggest fear about winterizing this is leaving water in the cooling system and it freezing and uh, yeah, breaking something or, you know. So I watched a couple other videos of, like, the pros winterizing them, and they were running RV coolant through the cooling system to you know, make sure it wouldn't freeze, so got me thinking. I went up to, uh, I went up to the store, and I got this, it was, un it was right at four dollars a gallon. It's, uh, RV and marine antifreeze. It's made for water systems. It's earth-friendly, biodegradable, non-toxic, uh, won't hurt aquatic life. Um, they say you can drink it, but you really shouldn't. <laughs> so, um, 
that led me to another problem. How am I going to get it in my cooling system? Because you have to have the motor running in order to uh, in order to uh, tr run water through it, or you stand a chance of damaging your engine. So I have a one quarter horsepower, uh, one thousand fifty gallon per hour uh, utility pump. So I've taken that and put it in a five gallon bucket and hooked my hose up to my cooling system. So instead of turning the water on when I start the ski, what I'll do is plug in the pump. Um, so it'll be interesting. So let me get my coolant filled up with my five gallon bucket and uh, we'll see what happens here. All right. Um, there's four gallons of RV antifreeze in my bucket. And this stuff said not to dilute it, by the way. And it protects it down to negative 52 degrees. If it gets that cold here, I'm going to have more problems than a frozen jet ski. Um, so, I'm ready to fire this thing up and see what happens. It's going to beep like crazy because it's almost out of gas. Definitely antifreeze in it now. <laughs> All right, that worked. Oh, now how I ended up with antifreeze in here? Oh, I know how. Okay. All right, well, that worked. So uh, now I'm pretty confident that it's not going to freeze. All right, now we are uh, ready to fog the engine. Um, to do this, you will need to remove the. Uh, all the spark plug wires and a spark plug which are deep I get to that in a minute uh, next thing is kind of a pain to do uh, let me see if I can get the camera in here so I can show you the two wires that you need to disconnect which are right down there and it is the two gray ones let me see if I can reach my hand in there again from the other direction I can't see what I'm doing all right, right here. Two gray ends, these two. Now, <laughs> word of advice, mark them somehow. Um, I did this once before when I first got the ski, thinking I had to do it every time I ran it. And um, I swapped them when I hooked them back up. And let me tell you, it does not run when you do that. It took me uh, a little bit of time to figure it out. But mark them and take those two loose. Uh, so I'm going to get the plugs out and uh, get the wires loose and we'll pick this back up. Okay, I got the plugs removed. I used the actual Kawasaki uh, wrench that came with the ski. It's under the seat. And uh, the plugs I'm going to replace. But I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to do it at the beginning of the season. Um, because I'm fogging it. There's no sense in kind of fouling them now and when I'm going to replace them. So anyway, I got my uh, stable fogging oil. And I'm just shooting directly down in the cylinder for about the count of four. And uh, I'm going to do each one. And then okay. I'll be sprayed it down into each cylinder. Uh, now I'd advise you to put a rag over top of this. Make sure it's clean. You don't want anything falling in your cylinder. And then turn it on. And it's going to beep like crazy. All right. And hit your starter a couple times. That's just to spread it around. All right. Now just put your plugs back and, uh, well, spray your plugs too before you put them back in uh, and hook all your wires back up. Did want to mention putting your plugs in. 
and tighten until it's snug. Then do about eh, a little over a quarter turn. And that is about all you need. Don't go crazy. Um, and make sure you get the right plugs uh, to put back. And remember to hook your coil wires back up in the correct order that they, uh, well, to the ones they came loose from. Like I said before, uh, I marked mine with a uh, zip tie. I put a zip tie on each end so I know which two went back together. Um, if you cross them up, it will not start. Okay, the engine's fogged and um, that pretty much completes everything. The only last couple of things I want to do, I want to use fluid film. I'm going to spray down a light coat over all the metal on the engine. Uh, make sure to get down on the muffler down in here too on the metal because I saw a little place where I had some rust that wasn't coated. Um, this should be okay. Don't actually do the muffler. I'm talking up in front of it. Uh, but just coat everything. Give it a little spray. Uh, go around and do all your, your cable, your throttle cable, your steering cable, uh, everything that you can lubricate. Go ahead and spray it down with uh, something like fluid film, not WD-40, which is going to dissipate. Fluid film is kind of a coat. Um, I guess you could use your fogging spray. It would probably work too, but I really like uh, fluid film. Like I said, uh, it's some good stuff. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do finally, well, actually there's two final steps or well, three now that I think about it. Since mine's going to be stored outside, I'm going to go ahead and remove the battery, completely store it inside uh, so it doesn't freeze and probably um, throw a charge on it every once in a while. Uh, hopefully it'll hopefully it'll make it to next year. Uh, next, uh, finish draining all the fuel out that I can get out of the tank. Leave your gas cap loose, not off. Uh, they, that's what the manual says, so I'm going to go with that. Um, and finally, uh, before I put it all back together, I'm going to go ahead and wash it and wax it. And put its cover on and uh, pull it out next year, next spring. And uh, hopefully it will be just as good a shape as it is now.